today we are going to study the bone humerus in its upper end it is round lower end it is flat and expanded in between these two ends we have the shaft of the humerus for site determination in the upper end it has a rounded head lower end is expanded flattened from before backwards head is directed medially upwards and backwards lesser tubercle it projects from the front of the upper end and limited laterally by intertubercular sulcus lower end on its posterior aspect it has a large fossa the olecranon fossa so the given bone belongs to left side now the parts of humerus the head of humerus it is 1/3 of the spear and articulates with the glenoid cavity of the scapula to form the shoulder joint which is a ball and socket type of joint it is larger than the glenoid cavity it is covered by the articular cartilage now the neck there are three types of neck the anatomical neck it is the line separating the head from the rest of the upper end surgical neck it is a narrow line separating the upper end of the humerus from the shaft morphological neck lies 0.5 cm above the surgical neck and shows the position of the epiphyseal line capsular ligament of the shoulder joint is attached to the anatomical neck axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral vessels are related to the surgical neck now the tubercles greater tubercle it is a elevation that forms the lateral part of the upper end there are three impressions on the greater tubercle upper middle and the lower now attachments on these three impressions supraspinatus muscle inserts on the upper impression infraspinatus on the middle impression and the teres minor on the lower impression lesser tubercle it is a elevation which is present on the anterior aspect of the upper end subscapularis muscle gets inserted on it whereas the transverse humeral ligament is attached on it now the intertubercular sulcus also known as the bicipital groove it separates the lesser tubercle medially from the anterior part of the greater tubercle sulcus has lateral lip medial lip with a depression in between the two lips now attachment of the intertubercular sulcus pectoralis major muscle gets inserted on the lateral lip by a trilaminar tendon latissimus dorsi gets inserted on the floor of the sulcus whereas the teres major gets inserted in the medial lip of the sulcus now the contents of the sulcus you have the long head of biceps muscle along with its synovial sheath and the ascending branch of anterior circumflex humeral artery now going to the shaft shaft it is rounded in the upper half and triangular in the lower half it has three borders anterior lateral and medial the anterior border continues with the lateral tip of bicipital groove lateral border it is only prominent in the lower half it forms the lateral supracondylar ridge radial groove crosses in its middle medial border is continuous with the medial lip of bicipital groove it is prominent below as the medial supracondylar ridge now going to the surfaces 
anterolateral surface it lies between the anterior and the lateral border v shaped deltoid tuberosity is in an upper half whereas the radial groove runs downwards and forwards behind the deltoid tuberosity anteromedial surface lies between the anterior border and the medial border nutrient foramen is located in the middle and is directed downwards posterior surface it lies between the lateral and the medial borders radial groove runs downwards and laterally in middle one third contents of the radial groove radial nerve and the profunda brachii vessels now going to the lower end it is flattened from before backwards and expanded side to side it has a articular parts and the non articular parts first going to the articular parts it has the capitulum which is rounded it is rounded projection antero inferiorly and articulates with the head of radius trochlea it is shaped like a pulley it is articular anteriorly inferiorly and posteriorly articulates with the trochlear notch of ulna trochlea projects 6 mm downwards towards the medial end and is responsible for the carrying angle now going to the non articular parts medial epicondyle it is subcutaneous also called as the common flexor origin ulnar nerve is related towards its posterior surface ulnar collateral ligament is attached towards its tip lateral epicondyle it is small and less prominent compared to the medial epicondyle in its la- antero lateral part it is also called as the common extensor origin radial collateral ligament is attached to its tip coronoid fossa lies above the trochlea anteriorly and coronoid process of ulna fits into the fossa during flexion radial fossa lies above the capitulum anteriorly and the radius fits during the flexion olecranon fossa which is a large fossa present posteriorly above the trochlea olecranon fossa process of the ulna fits during extension now going to the attachments deltoid muscle gets inserted into the v shaped deltoid tuberosity coracobrachialis gets inserted into a rough area on the middle of the medial border brachialis muscle originates from lower half of anteromedial and anterolateral surfaces brachioradialis muscle brachioradialis muscle originates from upper 2/3 of the lateral supracondylar ridge whereas the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle originates from the lower 1/3 of the lateral supracondylar ridge pronator teres its humeral head originates from the lower 1/3 of the medial supracondylar ridge now the lateral head of triceps brachii originates from a oblique ridge on the upper part of the radial groove on the posterior surface whereas the medial head of the triceps muscle originates from the below of the radial groove on the posterior surface now going to the capsular attachment capsule of the shoulder joint so capsule of the shoulder joint is attached to the anatomical neck 
it is deficient in the upper end of the intertubercular sulcus as it allows the tendon of long head of bicep with its synovial sheet to escape from the capsule inferiorly the ligament extends down the medial side of the shaft for about 2 cm now the capsule of the elbow joint the capsule of the elbow joint encloses capitulum trochlea coronoid fossa radial fossa and the olecranon fossa joints formed by the shoulder humerus it forms the shoulder joint which is a ball and socket type of joint and the elbow joint in the lower end which is a hinge variety of joint ossification of humerus it has one primary center during the eight which appears during eighth week of intrauterine life and seven secondary centers in the upper end it has three secondary centers which appear for the head the greater tubercle and the lesser tubercle all these three fuse together by about seventh year of life and then fuse with the shaft by about 20 20th year of life in the lower end it has four secondary centers one for the medial epicondyle one for the lateral epicondyle capitulum and the trochlea four of these fuse together by about 14th year of life and then fuse with the shaft during 16th year of life now going to the applied aspects related to humerus the commonest fracture of humerus is the supracondylar fracture axillary nerve can get injured if the fracture occurs at the surgical neck mid shaft fracture causes the injury to the radial nerve ulnar nerve which is located on the posterior surface of the medial epicondyle is easily palpated hence it is helpful in conditions like leprosy in which there is thickening of the peripheral nerves so the ulnar nerve can be easily palpated dislocation of the shoulder joint is common due to the loose capsule and the small glenoid cavity with the large head of the humerus